ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And today we celebrate the memorial of St. Gregory the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church. Let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gladness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, and that we pray with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of holy blood may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. For if anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Amen. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord belongs to the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of the scenery. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, 
he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your net for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the net. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were peering. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish, they have made seize him, and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Luke's story of Jesus calling the first disciples is unique among the Synoptic Gospels. While Mark and Matthew speak of Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee and abruptly calling Simon, Andrew, James, and John to follow him, only Luke tells the story of a miraculous catch of fish preceding the call. Luke's story shares common elements with John's post-resurrection story of Jesus meeting his disciples at the Sea of Galilee. That's on John 21. John 21. We see after a tiny night of fishing, Jesus offering some unsolicited fishing advice, an overwhelming catch of fish, and a recognition of Jesus' identity that focuses especially on the response of Simon Peter. In Luke's Gospel, this is not Simon's first encounter with Jesus. Jesus has already been to Simon's home in Capernaum and has killed his mother-in-law. Perhaps that explains Simon's willingness to let Jesus use his fishing boat as a floating pulpit. Simon had been fishing all night with no success. Then working from the early morning hours, cleaning his nets. Most likely, he was exhausted and looking forward to going home and getting some sleep. So it must have seemed a bit of an imposition when Jesus got into Simon's boat and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. But nevertheless, Simon did what Jesus asked. Jesus tells Simon to put out into deep water and let down his net for a catch. Simon only believes this would be a fruitless exercise. He's the professional fisherman after all. We can almost hear the exasperation in his voice when he responds, Master, we have worked all night, but have, but have got nothing. But then he continues, Yet, if you say so, I will let down the net. Nothing more than that, just simple obedience to Jesus. Acting on Jesus' command, the nets are raised and are overfilled with, with fish, so many that another boat is needed to hold the catch. Needless to say, the fishermen were astonished and certainly had to have a feeling of discomfort and uncertainty, as one would expect after witnessing a miracle. Peter's response to the miracle of abundance was his acceptance that he is unworthy 
because he is a sinful man. Jesus responds to Simon by saying, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. The Greek word for catching used here in, in the gospel is sogron, is rare in the New Testament, but means to catch alive. Of course, fishing with nets was just a matter of catching fish alive, but those live fish will soon be dead. Here Jesus calls Simon and his partners to a new location of catching people so that they may live a life-giving vocation of being caught up in God's mission of salvation for all. Although they have just brought in the greatest catch of their fishing careers, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John leave those boatloads of fish behind and follow Jesus. Their encounter with Jesus will completely reorient their lives, leaving everything they have to follow Jesus. They drop everything they were doing, walk away from their possessions and families, and follow Jesus. That, of course, begs the questions, what do we have to leave behind to follow Jesus? Or, what have we failed to leave behind to follow Jesus? This text offers rich possibilities for reflecting on how God calls ordinary people to discipleship and mission. After all, there is nothing there's a slightest bit extraordinary about Simon, Simon Peter and his fishing partners. They are simple fishermen, and they are simply doing what they did every day. They are minding their own business, cleaning their nets after a long, particularly discouraging night of work. And when Jesus comes along, he enters into their extremely normal and simple lives and changes everything. Jesus calls Simon and his partner as they are. Simon is very much aware of his unworthiness, but Jesus seems not to care about this. Jesus don't, does not ask Simon to get his act together, his resume prepared, and then come back for an interview. Rather, Jesus encountered him as he is, tells him not to be afraid, and calls him to a new mission of catching people. Throughout the scripture, we see that human sin, failure, and inequity are not obstacles to God's call. God calls imperfect people to do God's work, people who are aware of their unworthiness and are often doubting and resistant to God's call. God doesn't wait for them to shape up. God calls them as they are and then works on shaping them into faithful servants. The message in Luke's Gospel is not so much of an, one of acceptance or, or recognition of a call. It is one of obedience. A call to discipleship is something that God has both commanded and enabled. But how often do we receive Jesus' claim on our lives because what he is calling us to do seems too crazy or too impractical? How often do we avoid following and bearing witness to Jesus because we are convinced that we will not see any results? For most of us, this would not mean leaving our current professions behind, although we cannot rule that out that possibility. We, are, we all are called by virtue of our baptism to participate in God's mission to the world in Jesus Christ. We all are called daily to reorient our priorities, to align with God's priorities, to do the gifts God has given us in service to others, to share the good news of Christ in word and deed. One thing that I have learned is that following God's call is not a single event in my life. It's a lifelong process filled with much failure, punctuated with occasional bright points and success. 
Jesus mission does not wait until we think we are ready. The need for the gospel in this broken world is far too urgent. We are called right now, even in spite of our frailty, failures, and doubts, even in the midst of our ordinary, busy, complicated lives. Jesus' word to Simon Peter is also a word to us. Do not be afraid. This is Jesus' mission, and we trust that he will keep working with us and through us, catching others as he has caught us in the deep wide net of God's mercy and love. The fishing for people continues. God has chosen to work through we, human beings, we vessels of clay, and because God has chosen to work this way, it is crucial that we be alert to God's call and obedient in response to that call. Amen. followers of the Lord, let us join together to present our needs to the Father who loves us here. For our Holy Church, may the Lord protect her from all evil and sanctify her for his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those oppressed by poverty, illness, depression, or hopelessness, may the Lord be their sustenance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today, to the intercession of St. Gregory the Great, may we continue to grow in holiness and virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, may they eternally rejoice in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the repose of the soul of Joseph in Cosimio. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for your own personal intentions. Let us pray for Kelly and for Sophia and for Holly and for all those special needs and homeless children and people throughout the world. Let us pray for the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we have offered in love and with trust in your care. We ask you to answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering, we have loosed the offerings of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly <clears throat> right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Gregory, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her with the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the two, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, to gather Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Lord. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave, my peace I give. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with your peace. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Through Christ, the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ, the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Gregory, they may learn your truth and express it in the works of charity. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go on and now the Gospel of the